Welcome to The Advocate, the program that keeps you educated and informed on current events around you. I will be talking about multilateral relations, the lifeblood of a country's survival. Victor Onyekere will be discussing about NYC at 50, and Stephen Agiode will be giving us lessons from Sudan as usual. Expect interesting conversations. We will be back after this break. Multilateral relations, the lifeblood of a country's survival. Adolf Hitler once said, when diplomacy ends, war begins. On the other hand, Farid Zakaria, CNN international correspondent, said, foreign policy is a matter of costs and benefits, not theology. Nigeria has always been a prominent figure in African politics forming alliances with various countries and international organizations to promote peace and stability in the continent. However, the ongoing crisis in Sudan has revealed the need for Nigeria to strengthen its multilateral relationships to better protect its citizens in diaspora. Many Nigerians are currently stuck in Sudan, facing various challenges such as lack of access to basic necessities like food, shelter, and health care. Unfortunately, Nigerians' efforts to bring its citizens back home have been slowed down by diplomatic difficulties and bureaucracies. To address this issue, Nigeria needs to strengthen the diplomatic image in Africa by working more closely with African Union and the United Nations to ensure the safety of Nigerians abroad. Inclusivity and progressivism should be prioritized in the approach to foreign policy, much like the new British monarch, King Charles III, focus on strategies that promote selfless service, growth and prosperity for all. This will foster unity and development between African states. Foreign policies and ethics are integral to a country's survival in international system, and Nigeria needs to put its best foot forward to achieve this. The recent example of the fistful fight between ambassadors of Russia and Ukraine in, in Turkey during a peace negotiation highlights the importance of diplomacy and the need for mutual respect between countries. In conclusion, Nigeria needs to strengthen its multilateral relationships with other countries and international organizations to protect its citizens in diaspora through a focus on inclusivity and progressivism. Nigeria can foster unity and development between African states by prioritizing diplomacy and mutual respect. Countries can achieve a peaceful and stable international system benefiting all. I'm going to start with you, sir. You know, I'm, I, I actually raised three case studies here. The case study one is the current situation in Sudan. But before we talk about Sudan, let's just quickly say something about the new British monarch. Just something nice. You know, for the past 70 years, of course, Queen Elizabeth reigned after her father. The father tried to take UK out of uh, depression during the following the second world war right and then you, uh, queen elizabeth came on board as young queen now and she presided over league of nations including commonwealth you know trying to foster prosperity and then her son king charles the third is emphasizing selfless service for all selfless service and inclusivity that's the only way the monarch can be sustained as as influential in this so i just want to hear one thought from you and then victor will delve into other issue well <coughs> the um, royalty in England has played a big role in the Commonwealth. In, uh, when we are talking about uh, diplomacy and uh, uh, ability to impact nations, many Nigerians have uh, taken advantage of Commonwealth uh, scholarships and all that. We have benefited a lot from that. And indeed, sometimes in the economic sphere, it has been useful for us and all that. Uh, we come from the background of uh, the fact that they were colonial leader, uh, rulers. He was good there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but then we have evolved over time into becoming partners. The situation is really unlike the one you have with the French uh, and assimilation, where some will say that when the French left, the, they left colonies 
they didn't live independent states. I mean, you have play, countries without central banks virtually. They rely on France to dictate the value of their currency. Sure, yeah. But with Britain, we have virtually become partners. We have evolved to the extent that the constitution we run today is not even the one they left for us. We use the American constitution yeah, to show the extent of our independence. In 1963, we left the, uh, the, the jurisdiction of the Privy Council, uh, so we became fully independent. So since then, we have virtually became, become with them partners, equals. Uh -huh. Although under the Commonwealth, we have gained a lot. Sure. Uh, and all that. So, um, it's a point to say uh, to the British, congratulations. Uh, okay. and, uh, congratulations and, uh, to the uh, British. To, to on, the, on the coming into being of a new the monarch. New king and new and to hope that uh, it will usher in a greater period of cooperation between Nigeria and Britain. Okay, Victor, your thoughts? Yeah, I think I would just um, piggyback on what you know, King Charles III said about selflessness and inclusivity. I think it's very important because when you look at it, it's um, that word selflessness is not, it's something that we're very akin to in Nigeria. And I think that if leaders, right, can emulate that certain virtue, which is um, serving, knowing that when you are in any position of leadership, right, is actually the position to serve people. And selflessness is sad. really, yes, is really about thinking about the highest good of other people and not just, you know, what I want to do with this power, right? But what can I, what change can I effect? Where can I take the people to? How can I make things easier, better, you know, more um, progressive for the people? And then also inclusivity is also very important. You know, we must now show you know, like um, Stephen said, right, lesson for African leaders. How can we be more inclusive, you know, getting everybody carried along, right? You know, somebody once said that when you look at people who are, um, quote, unquote, disabled, they are not. They are just able in another format. Sure. So it's ability in another format. So, I mean, there is the... The, the, the non-inclusiveness of women, you know, and things like that. You know, so we need to bring everybody together. We need to build, you know, societies that are all inclusive. So, I mean, kudos to, to the British. Kudos to, I mean, it was a very wonderful ceremony. No, you watched it. And, <laughs> so I, I, I can only wish... I couldn't help watching it. Too. I can only <laughs> wish them all the best. Good one. Okay, Good I'm one. going to talk something now. I want us to say something else. Um, the next um, issue on brand, uh, talking about... According to Adolf Hitler, and I just stated it as when he said, when diplomacy fails, war begins. And you saw what happened two weeks ago. That was, I consider, quite inhumane and disturbing and perhaps disgraceful. Two ambassadors, two ambassadors mm. fighting. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you saw it, like, let, let's say about two weeks ago, yeah. The Russian ambassador and a, a, an ambassador from Russia and an ambassador from Ukraine involving in a, like, physical fight. Mm. Like, it, it was like a kind of ugly situation considering what is happening now in Ukraine. So I want to hear your thoughts on this. How do you think world leaders can gun around to solve the problem? Yeah, a lot of persons have died in, in, in Russia and Ukraine. So what do you think? I want to hear your, your thoughts on well, this, on the diplomatic <laughs> angle. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, issues on the ground in Ukraine. And there are a lot of uh, geopolitics that is going on. Uh, you remember Russia is a successor state to USSR, yeah. mm. uh, which... Uh, was engaged in Cold War with uh, the West. What we are seeing, it's, a, it's a, an evolution of that, what was going on at that time. Uh, Putin is trying to restore the Russian state as it was. The gradual collapse of the Russian state is what led to the emergence of states like Ukraine, Belarus, all these states, is their collapse. But Putin sees the world in terms of that time. He is, in my view, unable to reconcile himself with the collapse of the Soviet Union. What you find in these ambassadors fighting is uh, 
a physical embodiment of what is happening between the nations. Uh -huh. It's a, a conflict that it would not be easy to solve. I don't envy any diplo diplomat trying to solve it, mm. because in order to solve it, you, you need to know that these things go back a long True. way. The history between even Ukraine, how Ukraine came to be part of USSR in the first place and all that, the history, the cultural differences and all that. You have to delve far back into their history. And then the, the position of uh, Russia vis-a-vis -vis the West, the, 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 the different values in terms of democracy and autocracy and all that. There's, there's a proxy war going on between values of different, between different values and different ways of seeing the world. That's what we are seeing. But humanity a, is a, suffering. A, 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 clash, a clash, you may say, of civilizations. Humanity is suffering. Mm. Despite the views, uh, yeah. theologies, philosophy, whatever, humanity is suffering. Uh, we have humanity. Uh, well, <laughs> the, the truth is that when what has been part of the existence of humanity. I pray that there can be a truth mm -hmm. in 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 that in the in the conflict between them. Just that while the principal parties ruling the two nations and ruling on or why the, 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 the principal characters in this conflict remain in power, I really don't see it. Okay. Why the principal powers remain, uh, principal characters remain in power. Wow. Putin remains in power. And uh, the American president remains who he is. The Ukrainian president remains who he is. I, I really don't see how diplomatic ca can really change things. Okay, before I come to you, Victor, I'd like us to go to the, um, the next um, topic on our uh, regarding diplomacy and the Sudan crisis. Um, some people said it's not time for Huhuru. I don't know, I think you've read that book. It's not yet time for Huhuru. Uh, Mr. Steven, yes. you must have heard of that book. It's yes. not yet time for Huhuru. Yes. Yeah, it's not yet time for freedom. Yes. Uh -huh. Not yet time to celebrate. You mm -hmm. know, recently the uh, president elect Ashwa Dibola Amitunu, he has been on several, okay, he's out of Nigeria now. They said he's in Europe for for is it state visits or working visits? Yes, yes. Working visits, right? Yes, yes. And some, some presidents of some countries have, or some top people, including organizations in different countries, have shown interest in wanting to see him or wanting to have his presence because he's a new elected president. And then what happened last week or so, while he was in, is it last week or last two weeks, while he was in a, a Port Harcourt, mm, Governor Wiki invited him to come and commission project. And now, but some other persons are of the school of thought that uh, we can only have one president at a time. Wait for your turn. <laughs> wait for your turn. It's not your time. Wait, mm -hmm. wait, relax. Mm -hmm. Why some other person said, okay, it's a good thing. He hits the ground running. So he's trying to prepare himself. So mm -hmm. when he lands in Nassau Rock, he hits the ground running. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, where, whichever way, I'm concerned more about Nigerian perception. The administration of Buhari, uh, President Buhari is almost over. Mm -hmm. It's almost time up. So let's talk about going forward. What better ways do you think Nigeria can strengthen their imagery? We don't use the principle of reciprocity here. You saw what happened between Nigeria and South Africa. Mm -hmm. Xenophobic attack and all those things. I'm not trying to whip up uh, uh, um, sentiment. Uh, sentiment here. I'm not trying to cause any problem. I respect South Africans. They are nice people. They have good people. However, some unfortunate things happened. And this issue has not been addressed properly because one way or the other, Nigerians are suffering and the government of Nigeria has not been able to say, I mean, suffering in mostly African countries, image problem. The same, during the period of Sudan evacuation, um, a, Ghan a Nigerian business, I think a Nigerian businesswoman that deals with selling wigs or something, she was in Ghana for a trade fair. And what did they do to her? I don't know that you follow that news. Mm. They asked her to leave or they asked her to shut down. They actually came to destroy her trade fair. That look, you are coming to spoil market for we Ghanaians. Mm. Yeah, it happened. Mm. Yeah. So these things, I can go on and on and on. Mm. Is it the fact that Ethiopians shut down their borders against Nigerians mm. and say, no, 
uh, we need visa to cross or mm -hmm. Egypt trying to we had to the president Buhari had to call the president president uh, LCC before they could open their borders to Nigeria so is there something that we can do uh, we can advise the government to do? because we are talking about promoting African Union strengthening African Union mm -hmm. promoting free trade agenda and making Africa a strong economic block in the world but if you are having this this fragmentation in Africa it can't happen mm -hmm. so what do you think about it? Yeah, I, I, you see I think that it's, it's, it's even important what we are talking about now because after African free trade is about to take off, which means that Africans should prepare. We've signed the agreement, we are going to have to get to the stage where we start trading with ourselves. That's what the new government should actually be preparing for, linking up with other governments. Whether we like it or not, borders are going to be, have to be relaxed. African head of states will have to meet with each other more. And then trade, African trade will have to boom. Nigeria should be preparing itself for such an eventuality now. That's what we should be preparing for. That's what all the African countries should be preparing for. Just like Europe has shown, with a united unit, you can go far. Africa should be uh, our, head, our coming head of state should be strategizing along those lines. The problem we had with the South Africans was simple. The average South African does not know how much Nigeria contributed to their liberation, the appetite. Uh, liberation struggle. Uh, and being a refugee to Mandela. Yes, and at the time they first saw Nigerians, they saw perhaps the worst of us. Hmm. Unfortunately, our economy was bad. And then many Nigerians went there that were perhaps not the best representation of Nigerians. But it is not strange what has happened. What happened between, what has happened between Nigeria and South Africa actually happened between Nigeria and Ghana. You remember, yeah, in, 69, in 69, the Ghanaians deported us, and we deported Ghanaians. Uh, and uh, in the, we then, uh, yes, they first deported us. And then they, we deported, Okanda Shagari. Then later, in the 60s, they deported us, we then deported them. So then the South Africans are like this. Maybe it's a lack of awareness. Maybe our military governments, too, the way they pursued diplomacy. When you pursue diplomacy, it's like the relationship between you. You must always remember also your own self-interest yeah. so that when you are doing something, you think of what is in it for me. Cost and benefit. Uh -huh. The way America goes out and does things for countries, they always think what is in it for America? How can America benefit? You see what they did for the Koreans, but they ensure that American companies benefited from that. When they go to, when, even when they did Af Af Afghanistan, they ensured American benefited from it. We, when we do foreign, foreign uh, we went to Liberia and we didn't get anything much from it. When we do our foreign policy, we are not thinking in terms of what we will get from it. It's something that needs to be changed. You, you, there's no Father Christmas in the world. Just like an ind individual, you can't just be giving people things and without thinking of what you get from it. It's a basic concept in international relations. We need, with South Africans, to forget what is happening at the moment. We need to forget and forgive because it happens between nations. What we need to do is how do we um, re start a new relationship with them in which we show that we can trade together. And these two countries have, can partner to raise the profile of Africa. Sure. Because these are the two powerhouses two giant, today, yeah. uh, of Africa today. You know, it's quite uh, unfortunate mm -hmm. that Obasanjo contributed to his peace deal in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. He was the one that actually chairman the, on mm -hmm. behalf of the African Union. And ending two years civil war in, in Tigray region versus the European government to so your heart. Mm -hmm. Then Obasanjo is a former president of Nigeria, and then Nigerians were fleeing a war in Sudan <laughs> to Ethiopia. And this same Ethiopian mm -hmm. government shot mm -hmm. their doors mm -hmm. against Nigeria. That's quite what I know you want to say something, mm -hmm. Victor, as we round up. Well, I mean, as we wrap up, um, it also piggies back to you know what I said earlier, you know, which is really about I mean, you mentioned something around African Union. I mean, if we're trying to build a lot of 
um, solid ties. We are trying to build something that will be transgenerational. Because if we just assume that we'll be here forever, right? You would not be, you're going to play your, the boy is going to pass to you. You will play in your own time. And at some point, you'll be able to play. What legacies are we leaving behind? You know, if, why, sh why should I even require a visa to go to any African country? Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this to ourselves? And mm -hmm. I mean, you go to the UK, I mean, you just wake up and you travel to the ne next neighboring country. Scotland. Do you understand? But you, you can't even you can't, try. You can't do free trade that way. So, so but no, but the, the, the thing is, the thing is, we need to, we also need to, I think something is wrong with us internally. And is this thing that's also happening with when you come down to Nigeria, where, you know, I mean, this is not, this is not even being tribalistic. It's certain, the Igbos are not united. I mean, that's just, is a, is a strong, but that's a thing, right? So there's also this thing of, you know, um, you are Yoruba, but you are, you are, you are a, you are, from you are a foreign Yoruba, I mean, deeper Yoruba, you know, all of these things. Are, so if Africa so must come tribal together, disintegration, exactly, tribal so disintegration. we must begin to see ourselves as one. You know, I should wake up and pack my bags and go to Ethiopia without mm. having to worry about anything. Mm. And if Ethiopia should to come to Nigeria, we should begin to... When, I, I don't know you if you watched that video that has been trending on Twitter, but I, I forgot, I think the president of Kenya, you know, he yeah, was talking, too. yeah, he was talking about the fact that they treated us like kids, put us into a bus, you know, oh, he was trying to, yeah, uh, the, okay. yeah, so he was trending, so I, I want to censor some things he said, but it was really profound. But again, he piggybacked the fact that even amongst ourselves, we don't value ourselves. Oh, I get We don't carry ourselves with dignity, mm -hmm. you know, so... In a way, I mean, the colonization happened many years ago. Exactly. The, but somehow, there's still we, a we, mental we, we, slavery. We, we, are, we are even worse off to ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'll wrap up with this. It's almost like that king, right? That king that wanted to forgive debtors. So he, he sent for his you know, servants, get me the debtors you know, um, book list. And say, you know what? I forgive every one of you that's owed me so much money. And a certain man was owing the king the largest sum of money. He was forgiving that debt. Guess what? The man stepped out, right, and went to grab the truth of mm -hmm. somebody that is within his environment that is owing him just one tenth of that bigger debt that the king forgave him, you know, for. And so he couldn't forgive that small. Debt. The thing he heard about it, the king got angry and threw that man in jail. So it's this thing of within ourselves. We don't look yeah, after ourselves. We don't do. see ourselves yeah. as valuable. So how are you know those that are not of the African descendant? How would they see us as valuable? I think I mean we need. It's a core. It's a deep core of reflection for us. Yes, yes. We start seeing ourselves differently. We start seeing ourselves of high value. Let's put up a solid front. African Union. We must be solid. Put up a solid front such that when these guys come in, right. We can say, oh, this is how we want to do things. We are united. But when you say, um, let, me go to, let me go to Ghana to do this, and say, no, don't worry anyway, I will go to Nigeria, they will accept. So you see the, so when you say, oh, no, these guys are united. So if you try to enter through Ghana, it doesn't work. You go through Ethiopia, you are not going to work. Oh, we've given you one voice. We are united on this matter. Exactly. But when you say, oh, Ethiopian president is saying, no, let me go to Liberia, or let me go to Senegal, they will say, yes. There's no united front. We need to have that united front. That's what I'm advocating for today. Mm, that's, that's very good. That's fair. That's fair. Thank you very much for your input, gentlemen. Victor Yekere is next after the break. <laughs>